How am I just now finding out how great this show is? Let's talk about Hajime no Ibo, the fighting. I've only watched maybe 12 episodes of this series and just want to give my initial impressions of the show um, and my thoughts on like how I feel. Someone recommended this show to me like 10, 15 years ago. And I was on my Dragon Ball phase. Like I was just, nothing could be greater than Dragon Ball. Nothing could be greater than Berserk. Nothing could be greater than Vampire Hunter D. I don't really give a fuck about no Hajime no Ippo. And I never gave it a thought. I looked at the initial character designs like, nah, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it. No, 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 no. It was a grappled Brocky ripoff or something like that. Flash forward to today. Um, show appears on Netflix. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot. Look at one episode. If I'm if I'm not feeling in one episode or two episodes, I'm not I'm not gonna fuck with it. I'm so glad that I was wrong. I love this show. I want to explain why I love this show, what I hope to see in the series, because I know there's additional series other than the fight. I know there's the rising, and I think there's an, a, one other. Um, and I've only seen about. 12 episodes and I and I was so compelled that I wanted to talk about it. So this show, Hajime no Ippo, was created by the creator uh George Morikawa, animated by Madhouse and directed by Satoshi Nishimura, a legendary storyboard artist and director. Um what's what is the show really about? Just to give you a brief high-level overview or synopsis of the show. And I'm sorry for sniffling at the allergies. Um this show discuss talks about a character named Ippo Makanoichi, and he is a shy character, socially inept. Um, he's not only he's very socially awkward, um, but he's very strong. Like he helps his mother with her with her fishing boat business or rental business, and he's poured all of his all of himself into the into that. He lost his father at a young age, or it's, it's presumed. I haven't finished the entire series, but it's presumed and assumed. That he lost his father at a long age so he's kind of taking the place of his father in some regards um without blatantly stating it so a lot of that is just on his shoulders and he does a lot to help out you know he's always there to pick up the heavy equipment um and all the fishermen that see him they're like whoa they're just shocked by his strength and stuff like that very shonen and uh he's very polite he's very polite very courteous um, but just he doesn't have the confidence to like just get out there and, and meet new people. He's just in a comfort zone, so to speak, with helping his mom, going to school. And that's about that. On occasion, for well, not on occasion, mostly every day he gets bullied by, you know, the local bullies um, from the same school. And that's their pastime. He doesn't fight back uh, when he does get hit. He does get up so that it shows early on that he's able to take hits. He's able to take punches. Um, but he doesn't really fight back. And I want to explain a little bit later when he actually learns how to box, how he still doesn't fight back later, which is genius um, on, on the on the author's part. But anyway, one day, like like normal, um, he's getting his ass beat and a man comes by. He looks at it, looks at him. And he looks at the bullies. And he comes in and steps in. He steps in for the guy and he, you know, helps the guy helps um uh, ipo do that situation and ipo is amazed he's like whoa 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 how'd you do that how'd you do that he's like i'm a, I'm a boxer that's what i do and um ipo is just transfixed on learning about this guy he finds out that he's a middleweight you know champion at a local uh boxing gym and so he wants to know how to box he, he starts looking at videos he picks up a magazine where he sees the one who saved him I believe his name is uh, Mamoru Takamura. I hope I said that right. Uh, but yeah, he's kind of like, he steps in as a trainer, mentor, and quote-unquote rival. And he's a little bit of pervy, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, he learns all, as much as he can about him, and he follows him and wants to learn more about boxing. And long story short, Takamura takes him under his wing, teaches him the basics, you know. I want to teach you how, and I want to, I don't want to give too much of the story. I want you guys to actually experience this yourself, but he te teaches him about the basics. Like if you can't do this one thing, then you don't deserve to be a boxer. And he teaches him basically how to catch 
leaves and basically how to take a stance and catch like 10 leaves. So basically having a stance, you know, throwing out a punch, um, opening your hand, grabbing it, grabbing leaf, you know, changing hands, changing fists and doing the same thing until you have like 10 leaves in each hand. So, uh, Ipo, he's like, okay, I gotta, I, I don't know if I could do this. So Takamura shows him how to do it. Hits a tree, leaves fall. He starts punching and he catches 10 leaves in each hand. And Ipo's amazed. So Ipo spends, he gives, uh, Takamura gives Ipo about a week or so to learn how to do this. And Ipo, he's like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this, but he starts learning on the first day. He can't, he can't, ca he can catch one leaf. I believe, but he can't catch two. And he, ne next couple of days go by. He knows that when he's punching, he's grabbing the leaf, but he knows when he's changing hands, he's letting go of that leaf. He's letting go of those leaves that he caught in his hand. So he has to learn how to not only open his hand, catch the leaf, pull it back, but how to open his hand, catch it and hold on to it and just alternate basically. And he's learning basically how to throw jabs, how to throw straights, you know, um, but he doesn't know that yet. It's almost like the wax on wax on effect. And over the course of the time, he gets so good at, you know, one stance, not the Southpaw stance, but I guess the traditional stance, um, where he's able to do it, you know, with one hand, he's able to catch as many leaves as possible. And he catches 10 leaves and he shows Takamura, you know, he wants him to, you know, as the week has gone by, he wants to show him what he's done. And to Takamura's surprise, he finds out that not only has he done it, but he's done it with one hand. He's caught 10 leaves with one hand. So he hasn't mastered both, both hands yet, you know, and long story short, that gives, uh, Takamura enough initiative to bring him into his gym and he starts training. He shows him off to his, uh, his, uh, coach who his name is Genji Kamagawa, who's a trainer and mentor to everyone in the gym. And Genji Kamagawa is like, you know, you, you bring me a fresh face. This kid is too nice. He's, he's too polite. He has, he doesn't have the fighting spirit. I'm not training that fucker. And, uh, Takamura was like, no, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You don't, you don't realize, you know, this kid has a lot of potential. He's very, very strong. I just feel he's like a diamond in a rough. And so long story short, Ipo proves himself not only to be a fast learner, um, not only to be, you know, polite and respectable, um, but he's able just to grasp the concepts and surpass expectations of those that uh that others have given him and he starts getting the ire of a competing rival in the gym who goes by ichiro miyata and this you can picture this as the goku vegeta effect and i'm not gonna i don't want to give too much away um it's a great rivalry um but the story builds on the rivalry where miyata is a born boxer his father was a boxer famous boxer and he trained him to be, you know, a famous boxer. He's like the darling star at the gym. He's like the youngest star at the gym. And he's almost the same. He has a, is the same age as Ipo. But without getting too much away, um, you watch them train. You watch them fight. And they do come to blows. And I won't tell who the winner is. You can kind of gauge who the winner is. But it's not decided yet. It's, it's, this is a story that's building onto that. And that's what I like about this show. I want to get back to the part where I was talking about how Ipo, once he learns how to box, um, he does not fight his bullies. His bullies still bully him, but because Ipo has these skills, um, these innate skills that he's learned, the show does something that I don't really see in other shows and where he's someone who's, you know, he has, he's socially net, but he's, as he's learning how to be more athletic, um, a better fighter, a better hero, um, a better, he's, he's teaching him how to be a better person. And he doesn't really like violence. He, he, he thrives at his skill, but what the show does really well is they put people in a position where because he learned all these hardened skills, he could just thrash his bullies like nonstop. Like he doesn't have to waste time with them. He doesn't have to take this abuse anymore, but how they do it is, and I don't want to say it, but like he fights them without fighting him is fighting them. is what I'm trying to say. He wins over his bullies by not on his skill, his determination. His bullies recognize that this kid is stronger, faster than any of us. And we should kind of pump our brakes on, you know, trying to bully him. It's a beautiful, 
it's a beautiful development. It's a beautiful dynamic. It's a beautiful transition in what the show does. It's something that I don't really see a lot of authors, a lot of manga artists do. It's usually you learn a skill, you get powerful, you get stronger, and you beat the shit out of the people who, who bullied you. That's not how Jimmy no Ippo is. And I really appreciate that. Um, why I love the show, I like the main character. Um, I like that he's polite. I like that he's strong. You know, these qualities that you see in traditional shonens. Um, and I like that he likes the motivation to self-improve. I want to improve and out of getting stronger, out of working out, out of finding new outlets to not only get out my frustrations on where I am in life, but, you know, tap into a space where it's, it was always in me. Like I, he lacks self-confidence. He lacks the, and even when he gains new skills, he still lacks that confidence, but it doesn't deter him. He's someone that when he gets hit, he gets back up. That's his greatest skill. He has incredible endurance, incredible heart. He just has to realize it. And over the course of these, you know, 12 episodes, you see that. You see that not only is boxing helping him get that motivation to, to self-improve, to gain that confidence, to gain the inner strength. It's revealing those qualities that were always in him. And he's starting to get more confidence. He's starting to get more assured of himself. He's starting to be tactically s smarter. Like, he's not doing the same thing. He's learning how to adapt on the go. Another thing I like about Hajino, Hajime no Ibo is that it's teaching me about boxing. Like, I, I love boxing, but I was never, and I actually done a little bit of boxing, and it's an incredibly hard sport. Like, don't get it twisted. It's an incredibly hard martial arts. And I have a background in martial arts. Um, but doing boxing, you work every inch of your body. And it's not only a physical sport, it's a really intense mental sport. You, you have to want to, you have to want to train. And in training, it builds your endurance. It builds your, your capabilities. You see exactly your flaws, your limits. And you see actually your strengths and where you can, where you can improve. But what I like about the show and teach me like about boxing, I'm learning about flicker jabs. It's even talking about, you know, who was the best at flicker jabs in boxing. It talks about how Tommy Hitman Hearns, that was his, that was his, his traditional tactic of using those flicker jabs. It does in a stylized way, but I was like, oh my God. Um, it teaches me, teaches me about, you know, the peekaboo stance, you know, Mike Tyson's, how he was, how he had behind his, his mitts and, and start hitting with it. Customato, his trainer told him to do that because it helps with his guard, keeping his hands up because he used to keep his hands down when he was fighting and it made him a more lethal, lethal boxer. He could get in and, and, and really rock your shit. And you're learning about these, these techniques, these styles, you're learning about road work, how it builds endurance. You're learning about proper breathing techniques. It's, it's teaching you in a way that's more, it's entertaining. It's engaging you in the story. And I really, really love that. I love that about um, Dr. Stone. You know, I kind of fell off the series, but I was learning about science. I was learning about physics from that show. And I love shows like that where they're not only entertaining, but educational, you know. And um, it may be like a stylized education. It may leave some things here and there. But it's able to kind of bring you into the the overall core dynamics of what it's trying to say. And I really love George Morikawa for doing that. Um, and I get that nice feeling, almost like when I was watching Grappler Baki, how it's teaching me different stances and different, different um, martial arts styles and whatnot. Um, another thing that I love about the show is the pacing of the characters. Um, the show is rapid fire. There's no filler that I've seen in the first couple of 12 episodes that I've seen that just let me go, oh, here we go. You know, it, it's very... It, it, here's the point of the show. Here's the character they hit the fight. Here's the thing that you have to overcome, and it shows. It gets to it. You know, there's there's no bullshit, and I really love that. The characters, um, because it was made in a time <laughs> that I wouldn't say it was problematic, but things were a lot more lax. Um, there are some things in the show that kind of, go, Ugh. um, but it's it's not too much of. Uh, it's almost like it's it's a comedy. It's a comedy sports anime shonen. And yes, things that were made back in the 2000s, you, there was there's a lot more lax um, sensibilities. And it's not something that would detracts me from the show. It's it's like a it's like coffee. It's like wakes me up, you know, it's a bit like, Oof. but I, I remember it and I, OK, OK, I, I got I got it. I got it. And some of the characters are a little bit pervy, um, but um, I think it's all done in the taste and of the show. It's all done to move the story forward, to, to, to get these characters out of their shell, shell, so to speak. And that's something that's refreshing now to see now versus back then. So, um, 
now I'm kind of going to wrap up. What I want to see from the show, I actually want to see the character Ippo, you know, have a crisis of will. I want him to be rocked to his core. This show kind of models itself from like a Rocky type character where, you know, he has a lot of heart. He's, he has a lot of grit. Um, he has a lot of potential. But I want to see him either go against an opponent that just shakes him to the core, that just makes him like say, I don't know if I can defeat this man or, or this or this individual, or it causes Ipo to like think like maybe I need to like leave the leave the profession of boxing like altogether. And it's something like I don't want him to see him leave the profession of boxing. I want him to be challenged to leave it. Um, I want him. I want his beliefs, his core value system to be to be rocked in such a way because I wouldn't say he's a perfect character now, but he's becoming great. He's become, he's ascending, he's, he's surpassing, he's becoming the, the, the character, the man that he's always dreamed of being. And he's ga gaining a legend. He's gaining, gaining a lot of people who are mythologizing him. And because of that, there are going to be, there should be elements that just should, you know, push him out of whack, you know, either in his personality, his personality should maybe change a little bit, or, you know, maybe he gets a little more cocky, you know, things like that to spice up his character, um, I would love to see. So, and I know there's other series other than the, the fighting and that's the one I'm watching right now, but, um, I'm, I guess I'm hoping to see glimpses of those in this series right now. And if they don't show up, that's fine too. So yeah, if just to wrap it up, if you liked Grappler Baki, if you liked, you know, sports anime, if you love Shonen's, that's my cat, you'll love Hajime no Ippo. I really love this show. I'll give my rating right here. Boom. Um, it's a beautiful show, great characters, great writing. I love the animation. Those nice thick lines help those characters pop and stand out. I really miss that style of anime and I recommend all of you see it. All right. That's all I got. Cabs out.